Hey everybody, welcome back. My mission is to spread knowledge about the different diseases that people go through because a lot of people don't know what the ailments are and what they do to you, how to correct them. They just are told that they have certain things and give them some medicine and then they send them home. Well, I'm trying to educate people on what illnesses you have and so you can have a better outlook on what's going on with your body. So this week, we're going to talk about GERD, which is basically heartburn. And GERD stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease, also called acid regurgitation or heartburn. GERD is a digestive disorder that affects the lower esophageal sphincter, the ring muscle between the esophagus and the stomach. GERD occurs when the contents from your stomach move up into your esophagus. The backwash can irritate or inflame the lining of your esophagus, and if left untreated, it could cause serious complications. Severity of GERD depends on the lower esophageal sphincter's dysfunction, type, and amount of fluid brought up from the stomach, and the neutralizing effect of saliva. When you swallow, a circular band of muscle at the bottom of your esophagus relaxes to allow food and liquid to flow into the stomach. If the sphincter relaxes abnormally or weakens, stomach acid can flow back into your esophagus. Acid reflux can cause an uncomfortable burning feeling in the upper chest that radiates up towards your neck. You may have a sour or bitter taste in your mouth. It could cause you to regurgitate food or liquid from the stomach into your mouth. GERD can cause difficulty swallowing. It could also lead to breathing problems like chronic cough or asthma. Hormonal changes during pregnancy can cause muscles in the esophagus to relax more frequently, and the baby puts pressure on the stomach, causing increased risk of stomach acid. Doctors believe that a hiatal hernia can weaken the lower esophageal sphincter and increase the risk of GERD. Hiatal hernia occurs when the upper part of the stomach moves into the chest through a small opening in the diaphragm. The opening in the diaphragm helps support the lower end of the esophagus. Having a hiatal hernia can allow stomach contents to reflux more easily into the esophagus. Coughing, vomiting, straining, or sudden physical exertion causes increased pressure in the abdomen, resulting in a hiatal hernia. Obesity and pregnancy also contributes to this condition. Hiatal hernias usually don't require treatment unless the hernia is in danger of becoming twisted in a way that cuts the blood supply off, or if it's complicated by severe GERD or esophagitis. GERD symptoms. You will experience a burning sensation in your chest, usually after eating, and it could be worse at night. You could have chest pains, difficulty swallowing, backflow of food or liquids, sensation of a lump in your throat, acid or bitter taste in your mouth. You can regurgitate while laying down or bending over, and wearing tight clothes can make it worse. If you have nighttime acid reflux, you could have a chronic cough, laryngitis, disrupted sleep, new or worsening asthma. Risk factors of GERD. Certain conditions can increase your chances of developing GERD. Obesity, pregnancy, connective tissue disorder like scleroderma, delayed stomach emptying, and hiatal hernia. Factors that aggravate acid reflux. Eating large meals or eating late at night. Lying down after a meal. Certain food triggers GERD like fatty or fried foods. Drinking certain beverages like alcohol, coffee, or soda. Taking certain medications like aspirin or NSAIDs like ibuprofen, Aleve, or Advil. GERD diagnosis. If you experience heartburn for more than two weeks, you should contact your doctor. Before you see the doctor, you want to keep a log of symptoms, triggers, and stressors in life. Bring a list of your meds and any key medical information. The doctor will complete a physical exam and discuss what symptoms you are having. Then there could be a series of tests they may order. Barium swallow is one of those tests and this test requires you to drink chalky liquid and be x-rayed. Imaging is used to examine your upper digestive tract. The chalky liquid allows the doctor to see a silhouette of your esophagus, stomach and upper intestine. You could also be asked to swallow a barium pill that can diagnose a narrowing of the esophagus that may interfere with swallowing. The next one is upper endoscopy. The doctor will use a flexible tube with a tiny camera and thread it into your esophagus to examine it and collect a sample of tissue, which is a biopsy, if needed. This test examines the esophagus, stomach, and the beginning of the small intestine. Esophageal manometry. A flexible tube is threaded into your esophagus 
to measure the strength of your esophageal muscles. This test measures the rhythmic muscle contractions in the esophagus when you swallow, and it also measures the coordination and force exerted by the muscles of your esophagus. Esophageal pH monitor. A monitor is inserted into your esophagus to learn if, when, and how long acid enters it. This probe test monitors connect to a small computer that you wear around your waist with a strap over your shoulder. A flexible tube is threaded through your nose into your esophagus or a clip placed in the esophagus during the endoscopy and it gets passed in your stool in two days. GERD treatments. The main goal of treatments is to decrease the amount of reflux or to reduce damage to the lining of the esophagus. The doctor will suggest lifestyle and dietary changes and if that doesn't help in a few weeks, the doctor may recommend prescription drugs or surgery. Over-the-counter antacids neutralize the stomach acid and provide quick relief. Those are Mylanta, Rolaids, or Tums. Overuse of these could cause diarrhea or kidney problems. H2 receptor blockers are meds that reduce acid production. They provide longer relief and decrease acid production for up to 12 hours. Those are over-the-counter as well. Tagamet, Pepsi, AC, and Zantac. Proton pump inhibitors. These medicines block acid production and heal the esophagus. They are stronger than H2 receptor blockers and they allow time for the damaged throat tissue to heal. Some of those are over-the-counter. It's Prilosec, Prevacid, and Zegrid. Prescription strength medications for H2 receptor blockers. It's Famotidine, which is Pepsi, Ranatidine, which is Zantac, and Nizatidine usually well tolerated long term, but may cause increased risk of vitamin B12 deficiency and bone fracture. Proton pump inhibitors, Nexium, Prevacid, Prilosec, Protonix, Asafex, Dexalant, all generally well tolerated, but may cause diarrhea, nausea, headaches, and vitamin B12 deficiency. Chronic use could cause hip fractures. We also use Baclofen, a muscle relaxant is used at times to strengthen the lower esophageal sphincter by decreasing the frequency of relaxations of the lower esophageal sphincter. Side effects, fatigue, and nausea. Surgical treatments for a severe reflux and poor response to medical treatment. Fundoplication. The surgeon wraps the top of your stomach around the lower esophageal sphincter to tighten the muscles, increase pressure in the lower esophageal sphincter, and prevent reflux. This procedure is done laparoscopic. Links device. With this procedure, a ring of tiny magnetic beads that's wrapped around the junction of the stomach and esophagus. Magnetic attraction of beads is strong enough to stay close of refluxing acid, but weak enough to allow food to pass through. The device is implanted. The procedure is a minimally invasive surgery. The doctor wraps a band of titanium beads around the lower esophageal sphincter to prevent stomach acids from traveling back up into the esophagus. Strata. This is also a minimally invasive procedure. The doctor goes down the throat with a small tube and uses radio frequency to tighten the barrier between the esophagus and the stomach. GERD complications. You can have esophagitis, which is inflammation of the esophagus, esophageal stricture, which causes problems with swallowing when the esophagus narrows or tightens due to damage to the lower esophageal from stomach acids that cause scar tissue to form. You can have teeth enamel erosion, gum disease, or other dental problems. Esophageal ulcer, an open sore in the throat that can bleed, cause pain, and make swallowing difficult. It is due to stomach acid wearing away tissue in the throat, causing the open sore to form. Asthma, chronic cough, or other breathing problems which may develop if you breathe stomach acid into your lungs. Baird's esophagus, precancerous changes to the esophagus from acid that damages the tissue lining of the lower esophageal. Could have increased risk of esophageal cancer. GERD diet. Dietary triggers can vary from one person to another. Certain types of food and beverages trigger symptoms. High fat, spicy foods, chocolate, citrus fruit, pineapple, tomato, onion, garlic, alcohol, coffee, tea, soda, lifestyle changes. It may help if you quit smoking because smoking relaxes the lower esophageal sphincter. Lose excess weight, eat smaller meals, chew gum after eating, avoid lying down after eating, avoid food and drinks that trigger your symptoms, avoid wearing tight clothes, practice relaxation techniques, and elevate the head of the bed.
Some herbal remedies might provide relief. Consult with your doctor before using herbal remedies because they can cause side effects or interfere with certain medications. Those herbal remedies are chamomile, licorice root, marshmallow root, slippery elm, and relaxation therapies. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. This has been your host, Imani. If you have any suggestions, questions, or just need someone to talk to, you can leave me a message. Bye.